part two on how I was diagnosed with kidney failure, an extreme form of FSGS, and how I ended up on dialysis. After my diagnosis of FSGS, my doctors at the time did everything that they could as far as Western medicine to prevent my kidneys from failing further. I absolutely hated the medication that they had me on. It was some liquid stuff that I had to inject inside of a juice to somewhat hide the taste of it. Because of that, I was traumatized. I couldn't drink orange juice all the way until my late 20s. And then when I didn't wanna take the liquid, they gave me the pill form which were these huge gray pills that I would call elephant poop because that's exactly what it smelled like as soon as you took it out the wrapper. For three years trying to take that medicine, it was just rough. Choices were to either go on dialysis. And I mean, back then I just remember when they said dialysis, I don't, I'm like, what, what is that? I didn't even know what that was. That was one option or have a kidney transplant. My mother and my father did not want that to be my reality. So my mom was the first one to jump up. And I always say this when I tell this story also, that she was the one to give me life. She gave me life twice. Without question, now we were prepped, primed, and ready to undergo a kidney transplantation surgery on August, 30th 2000 doctors never told us that a reoccurrence was a possibility they just mentioned that it was very important that we follow with the doctor's appointments for the next year plus because recovery is is very important and that we just take all of the medication and because i had such an aggressive form of fsgs the dosage of prednisone for me was increased to like 60, 70, 80 milligrams, somewhere around there, I think twice a day. Because of that, I remember after we went through the surgery, when I finally was able to get up and, and go use the bathroom for the first time with IVs in my neck and my arm and catheter in my private, I looked myself in the mirror and I didn't even recognize myself. I, I just remember I remember looking in the mirror and just being like, just kind of stunned because I was so bloated, chipmunk cheeks and just so overweight. And that happened in a matter of a week. Two weeks before that, I was a very healthy kid playing sports, basketball, baseball, soccer. And now I'm just a completely different person. And I'm not gonna lie, the recovery was very rough. We would see my nephrologist about once or twice a week or twice a month now. Now school, middle school, especially being in the eighth grade slash ninth grade was extremely difficult. All of my friends that I thought were my friends turned their back on me. All of the little girlfriends that I had, you no, know, everybody, everybody left me and I was all alone I mean I they couldn't understand what I was going through let alone me and let's just say kids can be very cruel I'm now visiting my pediatric nephrologist Dr. Gray and this was about two months after the transplant and she delivered some of the most devastating news that I could have received at that time. She comes into my room with her head down and says to me and my mother, you know, I'm sorry, Marcelo, but your blood work is showing that the original FSGS is going into your mother's kidney and it's destroying you. And there's nothing more that we can do. But because I was still so young and I just went through all of this that they could bump me up on the list and I could possibly get a cadaver kidney. And when she said that, I was like, another transplant? Like I'm still trying to recover from the first one. 
I didn't want anything to do with that. So my next option was peritoneal dialysis. And that's exactly what happened. 